Hi, this is Professor Jen Mei Chen at California State University, Long Beach. In this video lesson today, we'll look at the concept of visual patterns. In particular, we'll explain how a sequence of visual patterns evolved from one turn to the next verbally. We'll also apply the definitions of the four arithmetic operations to express the general turn of a sequence of visual patterns algebraically. Lastly, we'll look at how to draw a visual representation of the general term of a sequence of visual patterns when given an algebraic representation. The key ideas that we will develop in this lesson is to communicate representations verbally and also look at the general term of a sequence of visual patterns as well as algebraic representation of such visual pattern. I illustrated two objectives with a single example next. Suppose I give you the first four terms of a sequence of visual patterns that looks like the following. Ultimately, we would like to come up with a mathematical expression that gives the number of squares in the general case. So we can ask or answer some interesting design questions such as how fast the number of squares is growing as I increase the term in the sequence, or how many squares will there be if I wanted to build a staircase with 100 squares on the bottom. In order to answer the ultimate question, we need to be able to explain how the patterns change from one to the next verbally. In this case, if we say the first pattern is the n equals 1 case, the second pattern is the n equals 2 case, and the third pattern is the n equals 3 case, and so on. Then we can use this language of and to describe the change from one to the next. And before we go any further, I'd like to say that you want to avoid simply counting off the number of squares because by doing that, you lose information on the structure that is built in from the problem. Let me demonstrate what not to do next. If you had just counted the number of squares, then in n equals 1 case, you get 1 square. And in n equals 2 case, you get 3 squares. n equals 3 case, you get 5 squares. And in the n equals 4 case, you get 7 squares then all we can see is that there are two more squares being added each time as the number of n increases by 1. But knowing those alone doesn't help us answer those interesting design questions we posted earlier. For example, how many squares are there when n is equal to 1,000? You must ask yourself, how does knowing that each time we added two more squares when n increases by 1 help you answer the questions of how many squares there are when n is equal to 1,000. And the reason why you have a hard time knowing this is because the relationship that you observed is a recursive one, meaning that the number of squares you get at any given term depends on the number of squares you have in the previous term. But we want to come up with the general expressions that is independent of knowing the number of squares you have in the previous or the next term. So framing our goal in the more mathematical terms, we would like to express the number of squares as a function of n. So as soon as n is decided, I can find the number of squares right away. Again, what we just talked about here is what not to do when you're looking for a general expression for a sequence of visual patterns. And moving forward, I want to remind you that we are equipped with the language of the four arithmetic operations in this process. So you wanted to remember that addition means summing, subtraction means taking things away, multiplication means you have the same set of things added multiple times, and division is the concept of fair share. What we're going to do next is really what makes mathematics a humanistic process. When you look at a sequence of visual patterns, your verbal explanation really dictates how your algebra expression looks like. And I'm going to give you an example of using two different ways to see how the sequence of visual patterns evolve. As before, let's label these figures. So I have n equals 1 for the first case, and n equals 4 for the fourth figure in the sequence. And one can see that as the figure evolves from the first term to the next one, each time there is a corner square that is stationary. And in each figure, I always see two sets of the same number of squares. For example, in n equals 2 case, I see two sets of 1 square. In n equals 3 case, I see two sets of 2 squares. In n equals 4 case, I see two sets of 3 squares. There are two sets of 3 squares in the n equals 4 case. So the number of squares, 3 in this case, is 1 less than the case for n, which is 4 in this case. Now that I've observed the change verbally, I can express this change using an algebraic expression. Since there is a stationary square in each figure, that means I have a 1 for each case. And in the first figure, I get two sets of 0 squares. And the concept of two sets of something can be mathematized using the operation of multiplication. So I express this as 2 times 0. And in the n equals 2 case, I get two sets of 1 square. And in the n equals 3 case, I get two sets of 2 squares. 
Lastly, in the n equals 4 case, I get two sets of three squares. And in each case, the number of squares total should be the sum of what we see from the stationary corner and also the, the block of the same things. And that can be mathematized with an addition operation. By writing things this way, I can see that in a general case for a general number n, there must be a stationary corner in two sets of some number of squares. And that number of square is always one less than the n. And the total number of square must be a sum of those two structures. So this mathematical expression 1 plus 2 times n minus 1 gives us the number of squares in the sequence of visual patterns. As soon as I provide the n value, for example, n equals 1,000, I can immediately find out how many squares there are in the 1,000th turn of the sequence. Now, you do not want to simplify this expression if you're not instructed to, because as soon as you do, you lose the structure information on how you visualize this pattern. And because everyone visualizes a sequence of patterns very differently, um, again, if you simplify it, then we lose that information about how you see it in this process. Next, let's show you a different way how someone might see the change of the visual patterns differently. You might see the structure of a particular figure in the sequence as taking a square and get rid of a smaller square inside of it. Say it differently, it's like taking the difference of the bigger square and the smaller square, and the left over that difference is what you needed. So in the case of n equals 3, it's like taking the 3 by 3 square and eject that 2 by 2 smaller square inside. Then the left over becomes the number of squares you want in the n equals 3 case. And you'll notice that the size of that bigger square is always the same as the value for n. So in the case of n equals 4, that bigger square is a 4 by 4. And the size of the smaller square is always 1 smaller than the size of the bigger square. Like before, we can represent the number of squares algebraically for each of the n value and then try to generalize that to the case for n. It's a little bit harder to see the number of squares in the n equals 1 case, so let's start with 2. For n equals 2, I see that I have a 2 by 2 square and a smaller 1 by 1 square. And since we're taking away the smaller 1 by 1 square from the 2 by 2, the operation to use here is subtraction. And go ahead and practice writing down the similar expression for n equals 3 and n equals 4 case. Now there is a reason why when we have 2 times 2, we write it as 2 squared. And because literally that square means visually it's a square. So that allows us to simplify our expression using this square symbol. Now back to the n equals 1 case, you can observe that first number we use is always the same as the value for n. And the second number is always 1 less than the value for n. So for the n equals 1 case, I should get 1 squared minus 0 squared which is equal to 1 if you carry out the calculation. So this expression makes sense for n equals 1 in particular, but it really makes sense for all of the n values. Now we're ready to express the number of squares algebraically in general, which should be n squared minus n minus 1 squared. This means that if you were to continue drawing the figures, then at any given time, if you were to stop at n equals, say, 100, then the number of squares in the hundredth figure can be calculated using this general formula of n squared minus n minus 1 squared, which will be 100 squared minus 99 squared. So hopefully through this example, you can see that two people can see the structure of visual patterns completely differently, and they will communicate their ideas verbally and algebraically like what we just did. Fortunately, the number of squares in general is always the same, either way you see it. We can verify this by simplifying the expressions as following. From the first formulation, I have the algebraic expression 1 plus 2 times n minus 1. I can simplify this into 1 plus 2n minus 2, which can be further simplified into 2n minus 1. On the other hand, the second way to visualize it, the expression was n squared minus n minus 1 squared. I can then simplify this into n squared minus the quantity n squared minus 2n plus 1. Doing this math very carefully, I can simplify this into n squared minus n squared plus 2n minus 1. The n squares terms cancel, I have also 2n minus 1. So by simplifying both expressions, we have arrived at the same mathematical expression of 2n minus 1, which means that regardless how you see it or how you count, you always get the same number of squares at the end. And I want to take a moment to tie this expression back to the beginning when we said what not to do. If you had tried to observe the pattern using this table of values, and you should be able to see that for the general case of n, the number of squares is 2n minus 1, and that works for all the values that we've listed here. For example, if n is 4, then 2 times 4 minus 1 indeed gives you 7. 
So it turns out that expression of 2n minus 1 was a good representation for this type of visualization or this type of counting. But if you have counted this way or come up with the expression this way, I challenge you to try to answer the question, well, where do you see two sets of the same number of squares and then take away one in this visual representation? Hopefully this example has really showcased the creative aspect of mathematics. And the mathematics you do really reflects on your life experiences, and that's why everyone thinks and visualizes things a little bit differently. Next, I want to pose a reverse question. That is, if I were to give you an algebraic representation, for the general case or for the nth term of a sequence of visual patterns, how do you draw the first few terms in that sequence of visual patterns? And I want to emphasize there is not a single right answer to such question. I'm going to show you how I see it. To me, the 4n means there are four sets of the same number of squares, and that number is the same as the value for n. And to me, minus 3 means I need to take away 3 squares from the amount of squares that were given in 4n. With that, that means in n equals 1 case, I should get 4 times 1 minus 3 squares. So I start with a set of 4 1 by 1 squares and take away 3 which left me with the one square as the figure for n equals one case. In n equals two case, I have four sets of two squares and then take away three. And to take away three, you can take any three squares that you see there. However, this is actually very important. You want to be consistent where and the location of where you take, a, take away those three squares. Since in, the previous, since in the previous figure, I have taken away those three squares as a horizontal and consecutive squares, I need to do the same in this one as well. Of course, certainly you can take the top three squares or the bottom three squares in this figure. It's completely up to you. I'm going to choose to take the top one, which leaves me with five squares in this picture. So that becomes my final picture for the n equals two case. Finally, in the n equals 3 case, I have 4 sets of 3 squares and take away 3. So pictorially, I start with 4 sets of 3 1 by 1 squares. This is the first set of 3 1 by 1 squares. Second set, third set, and the fourth set of 1 by 1 squares. Like before, we're going to take away the 3 squares in the upper right corner, which leaves me with 9 squares. So that gives me the final picture for the n equals 3 case. And when you finish, you want to ask yourself the question, if you had handed what you just drew to your friend and asked them to guess what the next one would look like, can they do that? Um, if the answer is no, that means you have probably messed up the structure somehow that they can't seem to see that how the pattern evolves. Now, if you go back to the very, very beginning, when we talked about the objectives of this video, hopefully now we've addressed all of the things that we set out to address, namely uh, explaining how a sequence of pattern evolves from one term to the next verbally, as well as coming up with a general algebraic expression for the general term or the nth term of the sequence of visual patterns. We also did the reverse process where we draw a visual pattern or representation of a general term of a sequence of visual patterns when given an algebraic representation.